My name is Galton Blackiston. My wife and I own a small hotel and restaurant in North Norfolk. We have 14 bedrooms and we have a seating capacity of 64. I sort of fell into cooking really because I, I actually left school to, to try and become a cricketer. And actually at the end of the season, it was plainly obvious that I wasn't good enough, you know. So my mum sort of always said to me, well, you can cook. You're quite good at cook cooking. You're not academic. So why don't you do a market stall? And so I did. I sort of made homemade produce and um, it went extremely well. And each week I'd sell out. Um, and it all started from there, really. Today I'm going to do a sort of a free course lunch, really. So it's going to use the steamer of these little chicken and roquefort mousses. I'm also going to bake some bread in the oven. Then for main course we're doing a very simple rack of lamb. You know, if you could put me on a desert island and give me my last meal, it would probably be rack of lamb. Um, and we're going to serve an assortment of vegetables with it, all cooked on the, on the hot tops. And then for pudding, well I like to try and show off a little bit and do a, a hot souffle. And hopefully very confident that the ovens will back me up on it. I had seen Sub-Zero and Wolf products in, in a friend of ours house in, in Norfolk and it was the wine fridge, <laughs> funnily enough, but um, it's extraordinary wine fridge in its time which you could regulate the temperature for white and red wines and it had drawers underneath it and you could put beers in it and it was just sort of the ultimate almost boy's toy for, you know, come round to my house and actually you can see my wine fridge, <laughs> which was amazing. But, um, but also, like a lot of these products, it's all very well them being looking at the part and everything. They have to work well. And I'm not just saying it, but the product is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I have lots of them at home now. We've also got these wine fridges at work. Now, we're con you can imagine, we're constantly in and out, of doors being up and, and touch wood. I haven't had to. I haven't had to um, call out engineers with broken doors or anything like that or, you know, the temperatures unregulating and all that sort of thing. It, it, they work. And that's no higher testament I can say than that. Now, I'm going to make a bread. I love making bread. To make bread, we use strong plain flour. Um, has to be strong plain flour. And you'll see I've got quite a bit of salt going in there, so sort of like half a tablespoon. Okay, and it's a general rule of thumb that you would say almost an ounce of yeast, just under an ounce of yeast per pound of flour. A couple of ounces of softened butter goes into there. Now you can make this in a machine or you can do it by hand. I quite like making bread by hand. So you just start off by just creaming, sort of breaking up the butter into the flour and the salt. Now I have to hand uh, half a pint of water now this can be warm water or you can make bread with cold water. Can you start adding some water into there? Thank you. But the beauty of this place is, and I didn't realise this until fairly recently, that one of those bottom, although it's a warming drawer, it is also a proving oven, which is fantastic. So you'll see, I'm going to make this bread, put it in the proving oven, set it to 40 degrees, which is like a very, very hot summer's day. <laughs> And um, you'll see, come the end of the demonstration, it will have proved up and be ready to go on to the next stage. And that's something which is, I think is very good. With a cloth on top and into the proving oven. And it's really fantastic for breads, pizzas, anything like that, which uses a yeast dough. Fantastic for doing that. Well worth it, if you're into making bread. Right, so that's that. What I want to show you is you're going to have a starter today of a little chicken and I would use a, bin, a cheese called Bin and Blue which is a cheese which is very local to me made you know five minutes down the road but because I thought I was coming to London nobody would be ever heard of Bin and Blue <laughs> I'll use Roquefort so that's why I'm using Roquefort so what I've got in there is a little bit of chick chicken blended up in a, um, a food processor and to set it we have um, some egg white then we add some cream to it not whipped up or anything like that. And then keep adding a little bit of cream. And so eventually you want sort of dropping consistency. And the way we're going to cook these are in the steamer behind me. 
that's what I mean by you just want it the sort of consistency so it drops like so once you've got that you then you cook it in cling film so we put it into the center of a piece of cling film like so bring up all the edges like that and then you tie it like tying a balloon like that I know they're only little ones but um, it's a little soup song. So what we're going to do now, I've got some already boiled up and we'll cook these off and then we'll have them for lunch in a minute or two um, and we'll keep them in here like so. Great for cooking fish, cooking anything you want. But we're going to make a sauce to go with the um, chicken and rockfall mousse and it's basically, it's almost like a hollandaise sauce okay so it's called a sauce charon and the reason it's called charon is because you're adding tomatoes and tarragon to it okay so to begin with we have some shallots in a small pan with some lemon juice white wine vinegar and white wine okay and then we reduce it we reduce it over a high heat to about a tablespoon of total total quantity okay so you have to watch it because this will reduce it fairly sharpish and meanwhile in another pan I have some butter melting here alright and that's for the hollandaise as well um, so three egg yolks go into a heavy base pan like so followed by a touch of salt not a lot depending on if you're using salted butter or unsalted butter and a touch of sugar and a touch of pepper okay. so this is just the egg yolks basically being beaten to start off with like so just to start the emulsifying of it now this is just about reduced to about a tablespoon and what I tend to do is to add a tablespoon of water to it. It helps emulsify the sauce. And we're going to reduce it down again. And take some of the strength of the reduced vinegar and lemon juice out of the sauce. Okay. Once this is reduced down, we're then going to add the uh, hot liquor from the lemon juice. And then we're going to add the hot butter. Meanwhile, our mousses are steaming away perfectly. Yeah. Then... Do you want the butter adding now, Miss Rawls? Don't mess around, do it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Good boy. I have to say, if you put a hollandaise sauce made by hand and a hollandaise sauce made by machine next to each other, I think you'd know the difference. It's great, it's great. It's started to emulsify now. Carry on. Right, so that's on there like so. Now, okay, right, you are ready. I'll serve this up for you and just, you can all have a taste. Typically with chefs, we either like extremely hot heat or very, very low heat. Um, very little in between. So we're either blasting something or very, very, very gently warming it. And the hob top does that perfectly, absolutely perfectly. A very even temperature of the ovens, that's what I like, that's the thing most chefs really like, is the even temperature of cooking. Um, so, you know, if you're doing something very delicate like a souffle, if you've got them on the left-hand side of the oven and the right-hand side, are they both going to rise in a similar vein? Well, they do, and that's something very important. The kitchen is possibly the most important place of the house. It's where everything, you know, where you do entertain friends now in most people's kitchens. So you do want it to look the part. And I, I certainly think Sub-Zero and Wolf equipment certainly looks that you aren't going to get anything better looking than a Sub-Zero and Wolf.